Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. And we are continuing with our mini series on building apps with XAML and .NET MAUI. In the previous episode, we saw that we could change the UI and that would automatically change uh, an object we had in underlying code. But we then found that if we change the object, it didn't change the UI. We weren't quite happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> and in this episode, we're going to see what's going on and how to make it work. That's right. So a little bit of magic that we need to add into our classes, and it's called the I Notify Property Changed Interface. Mm -hmm. So let's do one thing first. Let's go back here and do user object dot login ID is equal to you know whatever. Okay. So remember, we tried to change it in the XAML. So the question is, what if I change it here? Does that have mm -hmm. any effect? And does that change the UI then, right? Okay. Because what we need to have happen is regardless of where we change the data, we want that UI to update. Okay. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to actually implement a special little thing that says, I need to tell the UI that something did change in the back. And so you can see right now, it didn't change it there. Okay. Right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add again another project now. And we're going to do another class library. And this one will be called common.library. So I usually have a common library that I use for all sorts of different things. And for this one, we're actually going to use it to build up a little base class that we will have. So I'm going to delete the class one that it adds there automatically. I'm going to add a, a new folder here called base classes. And I'm going to add a class called common base. Okay. And into this, I'm going to add just a little bit of code. It's really not a lot. Okay. So this common base is going to implement this I notify property changed interface. And this is really simple. I've also added a constructor here and an init method, and we'll see what those are used for a little bit later. But for now, this is the important part. It's got this property changed event handler that I'm going to set up as an event, and I'm going to give it a name, property changed. I'm then going to create a nice little method here called raise property changed, to which I'm going to pass a property name, and it's going to then invoke this property changed and pass as this property changed event args right here. It's going to pass to it the property name. This is what XAML listens for. They're listening for this event. Hmm. So if you have any bound uh, text boxes, entries, uh, labels, is enabled things, anything that's bound, they're all listening for this event. And they're looking at this event change to find out, is this property the one that I am bound to? And if it is, it then says, oh, well, now I know that I need to go refresh that property so I can get the latest and greatest value. So let's do one more thing here. I'm going to go to this base class. And I'm going to add yet another class. And this one's going to be called Entity Base. Now, this class is even simpler at this point. Because all I'm going to do is I'm going to inherit from that common base, that one that has the I notify property change. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is because I have this one, there's going to be a bunch of entity classes, user, customer, product. And I want each of them to inherit from this entity base class. Later on, we're going to create view model classes. Well, view model classes also need to inherit from that common base. But there may be things that are in common between all my entities that I want or things that are in common between all my view models that I want. So I want to have a base class in between the common base and my classes like my entity. So I'm going to go okay. ahead and share it from that entity base. Now, obviously, it's not coming up. Why? Because I need to add a dependency to that common library. Mm -hmm. And now it'll tell me, oh, yeah, now all you have to do is just do it using on that common library. And there we go. Right. Now that I've got that, okay, and by the way, since I'm setting dependencies, I probably should set it here in the Maui program as well, because we're going to probably have stuff in there that we want. So, all right. 
So what do I do with this new thing that I've got, right? So I inherited the entity base. What do I do here to make these properties call that property change? Well, I need to change each one of these, like this login ID, for example. I need to change them so that they're a full property. So if you're doing this by scratch, you can actually do a prop full snippet, hit tab twice. You tell it to be data types, so in this case, a string. Then I do underscore login ID, and then tab, and then login ID. And there we go. Okay. And here is, is the key right here. In the set, after the value gets changed, this is where you then raise the property changed. We do a name of login ID. The name of, as, as you know, returns a string of this actual name that is this guy right here. And that's what the raise property change is looking for, a property name. So it can then raise that up. And that tells XAML, hey XAML, anybody bound to login ID? And let's see, where is that guy here? here. And this text box or this entry right here says, oh, hey, I'm bound to login ID. So I better reread the value. All right. So yep. what does that mean? So if we come over here, and if you remember in our code behind, we did this. So what happens right here when we set this, that calls the property set, doesn't it? And then it raises the property change, which informs the XAML, which then says, oh, change happened. We need to be able to now reread that and display it in that entry. So let's make sure this works. Users. And look at that. There's my gobbledygook. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So what does so that mean? Changing, that means it, changing it in the UI automatically changes it in the code behind without you needing to do anything, but not the other way around, right? You got it. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So when we're writing our classes, we have to make sure that we're doing that everywhere, right? So I'm going to replace this whole class. So I'm, I've got everything now with the user. I've got all the private variables all set up. I've got some mm -hmm. good, valid default start values. But all the public properties have now been replaced with that design pattern. Okay? Okay. So pretty easy. Um, and actually, if you go look up my PDSC, PDSC developer utilities, um, we could put a, a link up for that, I'm sure. Yep. But I actually have a little utility that will generate these properties for you. You can do them one at a time, or you can actually point at a database table, and I'll generate this class for you. So cool. lots of different things we can do there to make that easier. <laughs> now, you'll do notice that I've got a couple of other read-only properties down here. I got a full name, and then I got a last name, first name. We'll use these a little bit later. Okay, but for now, let's just, you know, just remember that they're there. All right. So now that we've done this, right, let's start really using this. I'm going to close everything, save everything, and then we're going to go back here. And one of the things I want to do, I want to make sure to get rid of that because we don't need that. But what I want to do is I could set everything right here, right? It's a user object dot first name is equal to whatever. Yep. But I want to make this a little more real, real world. So what you typically do is you override the on appearing. So I would come down here and I would say override. Oops, hit the right thing here. On appearing. There we go. I hit tab and it fills it in. Mm -hmm. But always make sure you're still calling the base dot on appearing. As soon as this XAML appears in the uh, you know, the, the content view actually appears here, the content page, then it's going to run this code. Okay. So we can set a breakpoint here, and we can take a look at this and make sure it's happening the way we expect it to. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, okay. You know what? I'm glad this happened. Hopefully, this is going to be fixed <laughs> <laughs> version. Uh, but every now and then, you will see this error. The type or namespace Android could not be found. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> so. This is just something that happens every now and then. Typically, I just find I do a clean on this. Okay. And if we do a rebuild, it will generally clear it. It'll just take a second so you can see the little 
progress bar down here is working on it. But typically when you do a clean, it will fix it. Sometimes you do need to stop and start Visual Studio though. Oh, okay. Hopefully, you know, this will get fixed in the next version. All right, yeah, so it still failed. So a couple of things, right? And, you know, I'm glad this happens because this is real world, unfortunately, you know, just things happen, right? So I would still recommend you do a clean and then we'll just stop and start Visual Studio. But there's one other thing that you can do as well, okay? You can actually come in and you can do the add or remove programs. And remember how I named mine AdventureWorks.Maui? So yep. I can just search for Maui, all right? I can find anything that I've done. So, and you can just uninstall this, all right? So there's a couple of things that, you know, I kind of recommend that you do, you know, start and stop Visual Studio, you know, bring it back up, mm -hmm. uh, do the clean, and then actually really just kind of uninstall. So those are the kind of the major things that I have found generally clear those kind of errors. All right, now that we have the breakpoint set, let's go ahead and run this. So on a period, right, it's just one of those events that happens in the XAML lifetime. Mm -hmm. And it says right now it's going to appear. Everything's been set, right? The user object has been filled in. Yep. So it's been filled in from the XAML. Because remember, those were the properties that were set in XAML. Yes. And now I'm going to be overriding them in code, right? So I'm changing the login ID, the first name, the last name, and the email. Okay. So now when this appears, look at that. Ooh, nice. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it happened because of that on property change. When that event gets fired, that tells XAML, hey, you need to go back and reread the object because some of your properties have changed. Excellent. And that's it. That's all you have to do. It's just following this design pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Of this property changed. So you'll do this on all of your classes. Make sure all of your properties or any ones that you're going to be using on the UI just simply are raising that property change. And that's it. Excellent. Okay. So we've spent so far most of our time working on UI specifically. We're going to shift gears a little bit in the next few episodes and do a little bit more on code stuff and we're going to right. start out with what's the first thing we're going to do well we're going to take a look at some model view view model and i think bbm yeah mvvm right. i think everybody's heard of it by now mm -hmm. it really is simple it's really just classes <laughs> so <laughs> you know it's all we're doing we're creating more classes we just happen to call them a view model and we'll take a look at how those work. all right so stick around for that and we will see you next time on visual studio toolbox